Modern continuous lighting is a remarkable tool for photographers. If you've been shooting with natural light, AKA the sun, well, it's a natural transition then to move to continuous sources like aperture or nanolight LED fixtures. Because, well, what you see is what you get. So you can shape that light more effectively and often quicker. However, there are some really important limitations when it comes to photographing with continuous sources. If you care about your photography and the results that you get, well, I have some surprising things to show you when it comes to comparing continuous lighting to strobes. The differences are massive in some situations and minute in others. You curious? Let's get into it. LED COB lighting is getting much more powerful and cheaper. And this means that photographers, especially those who also do video, are leaning into the flexibility of continuous LED video lighting sources because they are bright enough that you can shoot at high enough speeds to eliminate motion blur. There remains a very substantial trade-off and that's what we're going to discuss today. But let's start first with the basics of how both of these light systems work. For this video, we're gonna be comparing the continuous Nanlite Evoque 1200B to the Profoto B30 strobe. The Evoque 1200 is what it says it is, a 1200 watt fixture. And the Profoto B30 is a 500 watt second fixture. Continuous watts and strobe watt seconds are not related in any real practical way. You just have to know through experience how bright a 500 watt second strobe is. Continuous lights are often named for their maximum power draw, which gives you a fairly good idea of brightness. Strobes can, but don't always follow this naming convention. Here are three of the top brands for comparison. They all operate on the same principle when adjusting light levels, which is a little different than continuous lights. Continuous lights operate off a percentage scale from zero to 100%. Strobe lights operate in power levels relative to stops. You can think of them in percentage because max brightness is technically 100%, but power levels make it easier for quick exposure decisions in a photographic context. In either case, it's obviously critical that you understand what stops of light are. So if you don't, then please pause this video, go and ask the internet, and then come back and see me. With continuous lights, you have to do division or multiplication. One stop down from maximum is 50%, then 25, then 12.5%, and so on always dividing by half on our way down and multiplying by two on our way up. Strobe power is whatever your max power number is, then each whole number down is one stop. So there's really no math to perform. Now this is great of course for photography, but would be a little confusing for professional filmmakers. Almost all strobes adjust in one tenth stops with Profoto offering the greatest range of 11 stops, which is the maximum any light continuous or strobe can offer due to basic mathematics. Ellen Chrome Pro Heads limit the users to a seven or eight stop range. Godox also limits the user as well, but offers power levels in fraction form with a stop guide next to it. To reiterate, they're basically all saying the same thing. The difference between the Pro Photo is that it gives you access to all 11 stops. Ellen Chrome and Godox throttle those stops which isn't a bad thing because 11 stops is an illusion. Allow me to explain. You're about to learn what Stephen's power law is, and I promise you this is not complicated mathematics. The human eye does not perceive light intensity in a linear way, as in it's not the same from 100 to zero. The actual response follows a power law, meaning as levels go up, perceived brightness increases actually more slowly than the actual physical intensity. At very low light, the gradient in perception can actually flatten and thus the differences between the stops are less discernible, whereas eye sensitivity in the highlight range is much more high. Whether I measure the light output of the Evo 1200 or the Profoto B30, I see the exact same effect. Light power increases in predictable steps starting at the power level of around six up to maximum. The power level one to six see almost no perceivable change between them. So what's the lesson here? Regardless of the light you use or how power is displayed or even marketed towards you, you really have five or six practical stops at your disposal. Come from where Jack is standing? 
There's one clear and obvious advantage of strobe lighting, and that is light power for size. 500 watt seconds is more or less three stops brighter than a 1200 watt continuous light. That means that I can use a 500 watt strobe to shoot at say one eight thousandth of a second at low ISOs. So this is great for sports or anytime you're really just trying to overpower the actual sun. It would require a light like the Evoque 5000B or a 9000 watt REM90 to even come close. And you can't even plug in those lights. They require three phase studio power or a commercial power generator. Not to mention, they can be really dangerous at close range. And this is a good segue into discussing size and weight differences. Allow me to illustrate with the two lights that I have on hand here. The Profoto B30 strobe fits into a small, light, handheld case. The Evoque 1200B requires a large flight case to store not just the head, but the ballast, fresnel, and cables. The strobe mounts on a C-stand, but is also light enough for even the lightest of aluminum spreader stands. The Evoque 1200 requires, at minimum, a steel junior combo stand. Not exactly portable for a light that is three times less powerful than the little tiny strobe. Finally, you would also need a power source or a generator to power the Evoque, whereas you can get up to 220 shots from a single battery on the B30. Continuous lights like the Evoque series are amazing tools for filmmaking applications, but are not ideal for the photographer. Now let's tackle operation. With a remote on my camera like the Profoto Connect Pro, I can remotely trigger and operate up to six different strobe heads at one time. Strobe remotes are proprietary to your camera system, so I have the Fujifilm version on my X-H2S here. Continuous lights can be operated remotely, but this means that you'll have to use a separate smartphone or tablet app. They work best, however, with a professional DMX system like Blackout or Lumen Radio. It's convenient, but it requires a few extra steps and you'll probably have to put down your camera each time. Advanced remotes like the Profoto Connect Pro offer TTL, also known as through the lens control. If you haven't heard of this before, it's actually quite simple. It's just auto lighting to match your camera's exposure values. You basically seed control of these lights to your camera. You can still adjust the relative power of each strobe in the system, just like exposure compensation on your camera. For continuous lighting sources though, there really is no auto equivalent. Let's now discuss the subject experience. Your subject is likely one of three things, human, animal, or inanimate. And for those, who are of the living persuasion, well, it can be quite overwhelming to have a big bright light bearing down on you and will often cause your subjects to squint or make less than photographic faces. In film, we don't often place lights as close as we may place, say, photography lights. For one, well, we'd see them in the shot unless it was an interview. But additionally, we also shoot video at a shutter of 1 50th of a second at ISOs of 800 and 1200, which means most lights don't have to be blaring bright or can be placed much further from the subject, in some cases, even hundreds of feet away. When it comes to shooting inanimate objects, either light system would be great, except for shooting food. Even low powered LED lights can melt things you don't want to melt, either by the direct light itself or raising the ambient temperature in the room. Again, this is where strobe lighting is the better choice. After all of this, you might have come to the conclusion that I am dissuading you from using continuous light for your photography, and that isn't necessarily true at all. While strobes do have modeling lights that are gonna help you shape that light, well, these modeling lights do drain the battery faster and are almost never going to be bright enough to help in daylight environments. So I'm just gonna do a test shot here just for lighting. Using strobes often means firing off test shots and then adjusting the light power as you go. With continuous light, what you see is what you get. So you're going to see how the photo is going to look before you ever fire off the shutter, which can be a significant time saver, especially if you're new to photography. Continuous lighting requires absolutely no recycle time. So you basically can shoot as many frames per second as your camera can handle. Want to shoot 50 frames per second? Only continuous is going to allow you to do that. There's also no camera to light interface that requires syncing, like a remote. You can swap out cameras instantly with absolutely no downtime. And my favorite part is that's just one less link in the system to fail you. In fact, probably the best and least intimidating way to get good at photography lighting is to first start with the sun or just some sort of indirect sunlight. 
then move to a continuous source. Even something as small as, say, the Nanolite Forza 300 with a softbox. Once you understand how light works, and you have enough experience, well, you can just drop into strobe lighting with very few growing pains. And that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for more videos like this one. And feel free to share your opinions, tips, and experience in the comment section down below. For me, for now, I'm out. Peace.